Hi, today the topic of our discussion is quantum numbers. There are four total quantum numbers, principal, azimuthal, magnetic, and spin quantum number. The behavior of electrons in space around the nucleus is described by a set of four numbers and these four numbers are actually called as quantum numbers. Here you can see Three quantum numbers are obtained by Schrodinger wave equation. And the last quantum number, which is spin quantum number, is due to the two different orientation of electrons in a magnetic field. That is a clockwise direction and anti-clockwise direction. So from here, we get to know like we have total four quantum numbers. Three of them are obtained by Schrodinger wave equation. And the fourth, the last one is with the help of magnetic field. Here is the first quantum number, which is named as principal quantum number. Principal quantum number is donated by a small n and it shows the approximate distance of electrons from the nucleus of an atom. In other words, it gives us information about the energy levels or shells. It also tells about the size of the shell. It can have any integral value that is starting from n. If small n is equal to 1, it's k shell. If small n is equal to 2, it's l shell. If small n is equal to 3, it's m shell. And if small n is equal to 4, it's N shell. So, as you can see here, these values, the integral values of N, giving us information about the shells or energy levels that are present in an electron. Greater the value of N, greater will be the energy of the electron and the space around the nucleus. As the value of N is increasing, you will notice the increase in the space and energy of the electrons that are present in the nucleus. Then comes the next quantum number, which is azimuthal quantum number. Azimuthal quantum number is represented by small l. And azimuthal quantum number tells us about the shape of orbital. Its value is always less than 1. So its value is always less than n. It has the value from 0, 1, 2, 3, which is like due to n take away 1. Now what is n here? n is principal quantum number. If n is equal to 1, 1 take away 1, the first L is equal to 0. 2 take away 1, L is equal to 1. 3 take away 1, L is equal to 2. 4 take away 1, L is equal to 3. So this is how we get the values of L. L is equal to 0 for S subshell. L is equal to 1 for P subshell. L is equal to 2 for D subshell. L is equal to 3 for F subshell. So the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 corresponds for various subshells. Azimuthal quantum numbers also tell us about the shape of the the orbital. So here comes 0. 0 stands for S subshell. That means sharp. Then comes 1. 1 stands for P subshell. And the meaning of P subshell here is principal. Then comes 2. 2 stands for D subshell. And the D subshell means diffused. Then comes 3. 3 stands for F subshell. And F means fundamental here. As a mutual quantum number, the maximum number of electrons in a subshell can be obtained by using the formula 2 into 2L plus 1 here. Now, what is L here? L is azimuthal quantum number here. So, by putting the value of L here, we can find out the maximum number of electrons that are present in a subshell. Say, for example, for S, L is equal to 0. Into 2, L is equal to 0 plus 1. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. And 2 times 1 is in S subshell, we can accommodate 2 electrons. L is equal to 1. That is for P subshell. So 2 into 2 times 1 plus 1. 2 into 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So we can accommodate 6 electrons in P subshell. Then comes subshell D. For subshell D, the value of L is equal to 2. So 2 into 2 by putting the value we will get 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. 2 times 5 is ultimately 10. So we can accommodate 10 electrons in D subshell. Then comes F subshell. In F subshell, the value of L is equal to 3. 2 into 2 by putting the value of L here. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And 2 times 7 is 14. So we can accommodate 14 electrons in F subshell. Now the values of L subshell, their shape, and the maximum number of electrons that we can accommodate in them. The value of L is equal to 0. It's subshell S. The shape is spherical, and we can put 
two maximum electrons in it as we just did it with the Halber formula also. If the value of L is equal to one, it's subshell P and its shape is dumbbell and we can accommodate six electrons in it. If the value of L is equal to two, it's D subshell, its shape is sausage, maximum number of electrons that we can accommodate is 10 here. Then if the value of L is equal to three, the subshell is F subshell and the shape is complicated shape. So the maximum number of electrons that we can accommodate in F subshell are 14. Then comes magnetic quantum number. As the name indicates, it tells us about the effect of a magnetic field on an orbital. It is represented by small l and it has value that ranges from minus l to zero and zero to plus l. Now what is l here? Again, l is as a neutral quantum number. So when l is equal to zero, for s orbital, m is also equal to zero. Now, what does that mean? You can see here, minus l to zero to plus l here. For subshell s, the value of l is equal to zero. So, of course, we got a zero here. So, the magnetic quantum number for subshell s is also equal to zero. So, why m is equal to zero for s orbital? Because s orbital is not deflected in any direction when an atom is placed in a magnetic field. And this is the same reason why S subshell is not further divided into sublevels. For P, the value of L is equal to 1, minus 1, 0, and plus 1. Now you can see here we have 1, 2, and 3 magnetic quantum numbers for P subshell. And this is the reason the P subshell is subdivided into three orbitals. Because when an electron is placed in the magnetic field, the P subshell is deflected in three different directions. Now, if we have D subshell, for D subshell, the value of L is equal to 2. So, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2 here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can see here, we have five quantum numbers for subshell D. Magnetic field, the D subshell is deflected in five different directions and this is the reason the d subshell five different sub orbitals for the last one the value of l is equal to three minus three minus two minus one zero plus one plus two plus three one two three four five six seven now the f subshell has seven different orbitals why because when we place the electron in the magnetic field the f subshell deflected in seven different directions that's why it has seven different orbitals in it spin quantum number spin quantum number is the last quantum number and as the name indicate spin quantum number describes the spin of an electrons in an atom we know that the electrons revolve around the nucleus and they have a spin around their own axis also actually this is also called as self-rotation and due to this they have spin quantum number and spin quantum number is represented by m and then a small s due to this self-rotation the electrons has two spin plus one by two and negative one by two one in the clockwise direction the other one in the anti-clockwise direction let's conclude over today's lecture today we talk about quantum numbers there are four different quantum numbers principal quantum number as a neutral quantum number magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number principal quantum number is represented by small n and it gives us information about the energy levels then comes as a neutral quantum number as a neutral quantum number is also called as angular quantum number it is represented by small n and it gives us information about subshells and its shape then comes magnetic quantum number magnetic quantum number is represented by a small n and it gives us information about the orbitals and it describes the orbitals within the subshells. Then comes spin quantum number. As the name indicates, spin quantum number tells us about the spin of the electrons. Positive 1 by 2 in clockwise direction, negative 1 by 2 in anti-clockwise direction. And of course, the spin is due to the self-rotation of the electrons. Yes, this is all about over today's lecture. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.